our problem here, mystery long division. So I have an unknown four digit integer. We divide by an unknown two digit integer. Then we get the resulting pattern for the long division. For the letters here, we're not doing substitution. You should just think of each letter as covering up the actual digit. With that, this last digit Z here is not covering up a zero. So there's gonna be an actual number there that we need to use. Now, recall long division, what are we doing? We're gonna take each of these digits up here, multiply by the divisor, and then that's gonna give us the integer that's on each second row. Now, our first step, I wanna show the divisor is even and that our last digit Z is equal to five. Now, to do that, first assertion I wanna make is that our divisor has to be a multiple of two, five, or 10. To see that, we take a look at this last step here. So these zeros are coming down when we run out of digits from our four digit integer. So to get this difference to go to zero, that means this item in the second row has to be a multiple of 10. Now, because Z is between zero and nine, that means we can't multiply by 10. So that means we're gonna have to have factors of 10 in our divisor. So that means there has to be a two, a five, or possibly even a 10 in there. Now, for our next step, we want that our divisor is not a multiple of 10. Well, if it were a multiple of 10, okay, we take a look at this part here in the second line. If our divisor was a multiple of 10, we multiply by our digit. That's gonna give us something that's a multiple of 10, so there has to be a zero here. Then if I take this difference for that to cancel completely would mean we wouldn't have a final step here. So this number here can't be a multiple of 10. Now, that means our divisor is a multiple of two or five, but not both. So let's assume it's a multiple of five, and we'll show that we arrive at a contradiction. Now, if our divisor is a multiple of five, the second digit is five or zero. So if we multiply by our second Z, we get this integer here, and that also has to end in a five or a zero. If it ends in zero, then this would be our last step, so it would have to be a five. Now, if it's a five, we can work out that last piece. Okay, so we subtract zero minus five, carry a one gives me a five, so I have a 50. And that means this last thing we subtract by has to be 50 to get to the zero. So that'll mean our divisor divides 50. It has two digits. So it's either 10, 25, or 50. We know it's not a multiple of 10, so it has to be 25. Now, if we take one over 25, I get 0.04. If I take any integer, divide by 25, that's the same as taking that integer and multiplying by 0.04. Now, if I multiply by an integer, I can't increase the number of spaces we need in the decimal. Okay, we can only make the number of decimal places that we need smaller, okay, ignoring zeros. So, if I multiply by 0.04, there's no way we can get three genuine decimal places. So 25 is not gonna work either. So that means my divisor cannot be a multiple of five. So we're left with, it has to be a multiple of two. So that means my divisor is even. And because we need to get a multiple of 10 here, we're gonna have to have that the last Z has to be equal to five. That narrows things down. If I take five, times my divisor, we get a two digit integer. So that means five times our divisor is less than 100 or our divisor is less than 20. Now there's two digits, so it's greater than or equal to 10. It's even and not a multiple of five. So we narrow it down to 12, 14, 16, or 18. To eliminate, let's take a look at the decimals. So if I take one over 12, Okay, I get 0.08 and then the three repeats forever. So if I wanna get three decimals here, we're gonna have to have a common factor with the Y integer. So 
That means I'm gonna have to remove the factor of three from here, which means the best I can do is a 0.25 or a 0.5, but if we multiply that by any integer, we're gonna get fewer decimal places. There's no way you can get three genuine decimal places. So that'll eliminate 12. A similar argument will eliminate 14 and 18. So we're left with 16. And we'll note for 16, we have four decimal places ending in a five. If I multiply that by integers, we can get ourselves to three decimal places. So 16 is gonna work. Now that we have our divisor, we can work our way from the bottom up. Now, I have five times 16 is 80. So we have to have an 80 here. Since we have a zero here, we're gonna have to carry a one to get a 10, subtract a two to get to this eight. So that means here I have a three digit integer, ends in a two and has a multiple of 16. The integer that's gonna work there is gonna be a seven, which is gonna be our second decimal place. And then the product is gonna be a 112. Now, we have a 112 here. So now I consider this step. I have, okay, our three digit integer ending in a zero. We have a 112. When we take the difference, I get an eight. That means this three digit integer is gonna be a 120. Now, we have 12 here, two digit integer ending in a zero, two digit integer. So what can we get from that? Well, if we look at what's happening here, again, we have carry the one, 10 minus eight gives me a two. So this has to end in an eight. If I go looking for multiples of 16 that end in an eight, we have 48 and 128 and then so on. So we're gonna have to have a 48 here. So it's three times 16. So our first decimal place is gonna be a three. Still working our way up, focus on the six. If I add six to a two digit integer to get a three digit integer, okay, that's greater than or equal to 100. So this integer is gonna be in the 90s. The multiple of 16 in the 90s is 96, which is 16 times six. So second digit is gonna be a six and this part of our division is gonna look like this. So I have six, 96, and a 102. Now we're at the final step. So we have our dividend, the y's, okay, unknown here, and then a 102. Now, if this y is gonna produce nothing when we drop it down, that means we're gonna carry that over, so this has to be a one. Then we're gonna want the unknown here, to be as large as possible without going over 100. So again, we're gonna have a 96 or 16 times six. So the first digit in our quotient is gonna be a six. That means if I want the dividend, we're gonna take 102, take our 96, we add up, and our dividend is 1,062. So that completes our long division. So. Here's our final board. Of course, we check our answer. So if I go to the calculator, we wind up verifying what's over here.